Okay, so in the last video, uh, I made a little sandbox where you can draw objects and then hit the S key to save all of their locations to a file. And then here in Save Game, I see uh, pairs of XY locations where each line represents a new object. In this uh, video, I'm going to show you how you can read that file and recreate objects that have all of those same coordinates as a way of loading your saved game. So here I am. Um, I've got my array list of point objects at the top called point list. Uh, I've got my key released method. S was how I was saving my game. So now here, still inside key released, I'm saying if key equals, that is not a one, that is an L for load. Um, I want to read the file and create more objects. So let's do this. The first thing I want to do is I want to like wipe clean all of the existing points. So I'm going to say pointlist.clear, which just uh, which just empties the list of all of the pre-existing points. And the reason I'm doing that is because once I read in the points from the file, I'm going to be creating new objects to fill the point list with. So let's do the reading part. Um, just like I did in my file reading video, I'll make a buffered reader, which I'll call in based on a new file reader. And then I'm gonna be reading, uh, what, save game.text, okay. And now let's import all the things. So I'll import file reader, and I will import buffered reader. And now I have to handle the exceptions. So I've got my try catch block, and all of the code will be here inside the try catch block. So I'm gonna do the same pattern that I did before. I'll have line and I'll say while line equals in dot read line and while well, that doesn't equal null. So as long as I'm still successfully reading in lines from the file, let's make this exception so that it will catch all possible errors, not just the particular one that this one was gonna cause up here. Okay, so I'm reading the lines from the file. So what I want to do with every line, let's write it in pseudocode. I want to uh, split the line at the comma so that I have two numbers. Um, but I actually need to interpret them as numbers. So uh, parse them both as numbers. And then I want to create a new object using those numbers. So let's do all of those parts. Um, so splitting the line, um, I said in my original file reading video, you can do this. So I'm going to create a string array called vowels, and I'm going to say line.split, and I'm going to split on a comma. Um, what that does, let's open save game. If, if I have this whole line as a string, what split does is every single time it sees the thing that it's supposed to be splitting on, it will make a new element in this array. So if I have two things separated by a comma, I'll end up with an array of two substrings. The, this is gonna be the first string and that will be the second string, including the space. Um, if I had three numbers separated by commas, the result of splitting this line on comma would be an array with three elements. Element one is the first number and then this would be the second and this would be the third. Um, but remember, even though they're numbers, um, they'll still return as strings. So let's do this. The next step is going to be to uh, parse each of those actually as a value. So I'm going to take I'm going to say float.parse float, and I'm going to take vowels zero um, because that's the first element of the array. So that's the first number that I read in. And then let's do the same thing for the second number. Um, there's a lot of kind of safety checking that I'm not doing in here. Like what if our file gets messed up and the line doesn't actually have two values on it, something like that. Um, so we can come back later and clean all that up. Um, but right now let's assume that the file didn't get messed up and like all of this should probably work. So I've split the line. I have my two numbers. I've parsed them both actually as numbers. Uh, I've got an X and a Y. So now let's make my new object. I'm going to run the point constructor and I'm gonna give it these two numbers as input. And if you forgot, my point constructor looks like this. I just take an X and a Y coordinate and I assign them up here. So now I've got my new point object that I've made using the data from the line that I just read. And I can now add it to my point list. 
want this dot add b. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's actually not clear the point list until we've successfully opened the file. Because like maybe if we mess up reading the file, we don't want to have already preemptively cleared our points. So I'm going to clear the point list there. And I think we're ready for a test. So right now, uh, so let's put some dots. Now I'm, I'm not going to hit save, instead I'm going to hit load. Ah, and as we can see, it has successfully loaded my new points. Um, weirdly, I am still seeing the old points there though. Um, so I wonder why that's happening. I wonder if uh, I wonder if I'm not clearing it properly somehow. So let's do this um, right before loading. I'm just going to debug a little bit. So let's print out the size of my point list. No. And then I'm going to do the same thing after the loading is complete. Did I close my? Uh... I didn't close my buffer reader. That's not what's causing the problem. I'm just noting that. Okay, so cool. So let's try this all again. So there I've got some points. I'm going to hit L. And it says before I've got 20, after I've got 39. Um, and let's add some more and I'll load again. Interesting. So before I had 70 and after I have 39 again. So it seems like it seems like after I always have 39. So maybe this is about the display. Oh, of course it's about the display. Um, so here I am in draw. I never actually I'm not wiping the background. So let's wipe the background. All right. So I'm drawing these. I'm going to hit L for load. Great. And there's the stuff that I loaded from the file. And now if I want to, I can add more points. I'll click S to save it. Um, let's add more over here. And then I'll click L to load. And I go back to that saved state. Okay.